This is Mr. Palmer here with take three of another video of computer and computer science. Health warning before you continue with this video, make sure you go over your notes on operating systems and multitasking. I'm just waiting right now for you to go over your notes. Okay, so uh, you've hopefully gone over the types of operating systems. So you've covered single user multitasking, batch processing, uh, multi user. So that's multiple users able to log in and use the same uh, CPU network operating systems and distributed systems, and real-time systems. Now, most of those types of operating systems involve having multiple jobs in memory at the same time. So it's quite clear that the operating system needs a set of rules which allow it to determine how much uh, resourcing is made available for a particular job. And that's why we talk about scheduling. Big questions for this little video. How does the CPU decide what job to do first? And what is the process used to manage different job queues and priorities? Just a quick recap of priorities. Remember, we talked about in the previous video on interrupts when you have uh, different jobs coming in and request the, uh, the interrupts coming up at the same time, or perhaps something more important asking, and uh, things need to be queued up in order of priority. In terms of scheduling when you have jobs uh, for the CPU, okay, just Bear in mind here, we're talking, there's a difference as well between uh, programs and processes, okay? Uh, a process is a sequence of actions that is needed, that is carried out in order to execute uh, program instructions, okay? So different uh, uh, jobs and different processes uh, are bound uh, for different reasons, okay? So you have input-output bound processes and processor bound. Uh, input-output bound processes uh, are, are bound to the amount of input-output and peripheral uh, type and speed of the peripheral involved. Processor-bound um, processes basically require more processing, complicated mathematical processes. The second type need uh, a large amount of processor time compared to IO-bound processes. So schedule out, different show, scheduling algorithms can be used to determine how much time a particular job process is given. So in a first come first served uh, system, you have your CPU sitting there waiting. And as jobs arrive in the ready queue, they are basically processed in the order that they arrive. A round robin system is uh, you have your CPU with its clock cycles and a proportion of those clock cycles are allocated to the different tasks. When a new task arrives, the operating system will determine the complexity of the task and then compare it, and that's compared to the complexity of the other tasks currently being processed and then uh, processing uh, time slices are allocated accordingly to that job. A shortage job first uh, system again that works on priorities all right so uh, it basically a job comes in it compares the jobs it realizes that the new job perhaps is going to take less time than the previous one and so the places are you know changed in the ready queue and as another job comes in and again the, the estimated time taken is compared and if the time taken is estimated to be less than another job then the queue again is altered to take that into consideration you can see a problem with this is that the VLC task the the one that requires more processing time is getting bumped down the queue and so in a system like this where lots of short jobs keep arriving uh, a, t a job which is estimated to take a larger amount of time may never actually be carried out. In the shortest remaining task method, uh, the process is allocating time slices and processing is taking place. When a particular when it estimates that a particular task will take less time, that gets bumped that then gets bumped up to the top of the queue. And again, slices are allocated, and as processing is carried out, and another task looks like it's going to take less time, that then gets bumped up to the top of the queue. So it's trying to get rid of tasks as quickly as possible. A multi-level feedback queue is a bit more complicated than the previous four. Right? In this one, you have multiple queues uh, waiting to use the CPU. 
okay uh, as jobs are given a long amount of process of time and they're not finishing so for example that rendering task up there with the VLC that's then basically blocked and bumped down the queue and other tasks are moved up this is to prevent long tasks from monopolizing um, CPU time and again as tasks are completed the ready queue is moved along and the new tasks are added to the end of the queue right key feature of this though is to make sure that uh, processes don't monopolize CPU time so how is the actual scheduling process handled see there's different parts to the scheduler on this diagram I'm going to cover two of those parts all right so you have the high level scheduler that's responsible for actually maintaining the ready queue so as tasks arrive okay the high level scheduler will determine whether they are uh, whether there's space for them and then they will be moved into the ready queue when the CPU has finished its current process the low level scheduler will then take a task and move it into the CPU and then the CPU will work on processing that particular task so there's three states for a job okay so I'm going to show you a diagram it's going to explain how jobs go in and out of the ready queue and then later on we're going to come back to this diagram and look at two different types of scheduler so the job enters the system okay and it gets placed in the ready queue once it's ready for processing it then gets moved in by the low level scheduler into the CPU and that task is running if it's taking too long to process and other things need to be done then it can be oh sorry well if the task gets completed then it can be moved out of the system and it's finished right if it's taking too long to be done to be completed then it can be moved out of that running state put back it put back into the queue while something else is processed if that job is waiting for something to happen for example uh, something to render or you could be waiting for the result of a calculation or you could be waiting for a print job to be completed then you get blocked when you're blocked you're put in a separate state and then once your uh, your resources are now available again you move back into the ready queue and then you can go back into a running state once your priority and the scheduler determines that you're at the front of the queue so I'm going to recap over that scheduler again you've got the high level scheduler which puts jobs into the ready queue and it only does that if there's sufficient room for the jobs in, in primary storage, in the main memory, or the RAM. If uh, all the files that it needs, or the data that it needs to do the job is available, and also if the peripherals that are needed for that job are available. On the Right on the opposite end of that, you've got the low-level scheduler, who takes jobs from the ready queue and passes them to the CPU. In between those two, you've got the medium-level scheduler. That basically moves jobs so when, when a job has been determined to, determined to be ready and goes into the ready queue um, and it's ready to be processed it can take that the, the data files for it from the hard disk and move them into main memory or it's responsible for then doing doing it the other way around if it's uh, being uh, moved out of a running state and put into um, uh, a ready state now these schedulers that the diagram i've talked about is a preemptive scheduler okay so preempt means to take action in advance of event of an event occurring so it's a bit like predicting what's going to happen and thinking right and taking action before that will take place so a, in a preemptive scheduler you need to think about that red arrow okay the job has entered the system it's ready it's gone into the running state and it's working all right and then the the the, the operating system realizes that this thing is going to block the system up it's taking too much time we need to move it out of the way to let some other things take place so we don't have uh, a problem on the system okay so it's preempting that there's going to be an issue and it moves it out of the running state into a ready state so there's different way three different ways for a job to come out of running it can be blocked if there are no peripherals available it can be completed and leave the system or it can go back into the ready state if it's monopolizing the CPU in a non preemptive scheduler that doesn't take place okay so there's only two ways for a job to come out of running it goes into the running state and it will keep on running until it finishes unless data or peripherals are not available at which point it then gets blocked or the job gets completed and it leaves the system so the operating system is not able 
to determine whether the system is going to um, the, the current task is going to cause a problem to the system because it's monopolizing the CPU it will just um, let it keep running until it either finishes or it gets blocked so the big questions for you again are that how does the CPU decide on what job to do first and what is the process that is used to manage job queues and priorities thank you very much and watch out for the next video